Muy buenas tardes a todos los que nos escuchan el día de hoy. Eh, estamos muy contentos de poder tener esta sesión internacional sobre el sistema de salud, el, sistema, el ecosistema de salud en China, sobre todo enfocado a tecnologías, eh, en donde vamos justamente a escuchar a expertos que nos compartirán información muy interesante sobre las tendencias que China está adoptando en, en, en materia de dispositivos médicos en salud. Vamos a escuchar también experiencias de emprendedores de China y de México que han estado ya justamente conociendo y desarrollando tecnologías en este ecosistema. Y bueno, una sesión de, de, de aprendizaje, de identificación de aliados estratégicos también para poder visualizar el potencial que China puede tener para sus eh, productos, para sus tecnologías. Así que eh, me da mucho gusto, sobre todo tener esta sesión eh, coordinada, como siempre, con nuestros aliados de Hacking Health, y hoy en particular para esta sesión con el Innovation Hub China del Tecnológico de Monterrey, que además tiene una presencia ya de algunos años en China, acercando tecnologías de diversos sectores, eh, pero particularmente del sector salud, a este mercado con eh, resultados muy interesantes que además pues, nos van a compartir el, el día de hoy, un aliado que puede ser de mucha utilidad para ustedes si están visualizando acercarse a este mercado, conocer las oportunidades y encontrar aliados, eh, créanme que, que será una muy buena oportunidad de, de identificar a, a sus aliados. Eh, ¿Cuál va a ser el, el orden del día? Va a ser eh, una dinámica que vamos a tener eh, muy, muy activa con expertos, como lo había comentado, eh, que nos van a estar eh, compartiendo experiencias sobre el ecosistema chino, en sector salud, sobre la adopción del de desarrollo de dispositivos médicos en salud. Nuestros invitados, eh, que son provenientes justamente de, de, de este país, eh, darán sus conferencias en, en inglés para que puedan justamente compartir esta información. Yo les voy a pedir a todos los asistentes a la sesión, sus preguntas las pueden dirigir en español, eh, tanto eh, su servidor como Alfonso Araujo, haremos llegar estas preguntas a los expertos durante la sesión para que puedan irse atendiendo eh, durante el proceso. Recordarán que tienen principalmente la sección de Q&A, eh, preguntas y respuestas, para poder ahí ir desarrollando sus, sus dudas, sus inquietudes, que iremos atendiendo a lo largo de la sesión. También los comentarios en chat, donde estaremos compartiendo información de contacto de los expertos, sitios web de sus organizaciones, para que puedan profundizar. Recordando también que el día de mañana les haremos llegar la grabación de la sesión, así como los datos de contacto y el gift box por parte del Innovation Hub eh, China. Entonces, pues muy contento eh, de, de, de estar aquí con, con ustedes y, y para dar la bienvenida sobre todo 
a, a nuestros siguientes invitados. Le voy a pedir a, a Patti Mora, de, 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 de TEC de Monterrey. Es, ella es directora de Hub Globales de Innovación. Pues que pueda eh, darnos unas palabras, to, sobre todo eh, explicarnos por qué es relevante, Patti, conocer este ecosistema y conocer las acciones que, que se están haciendo para adoptar tecnología en salud para empresas, no solamente de México, sino de Latinoamérica, que también nos escuchan el día de hoy, Pati. Claro que sí, muchas gracias, Víctor. Pues es muy, muy agradecida por la oportunidad de colaborar en este evento, eh, pues con Pragmatec, como siempre, que tenemos una estrecha colaboración tecnológica con Monterrey, Monterrey, Hacking Health. Y bueno, pues eh, compartirles que los hubs globales de innovación del TEC buscamos conectar con ecosistemas del mundo Hoy particularmente les vamos a presentar el ecosistema de China. Eh, es una de las regiones que, de los países que más invierte en innovación, emprendimiento tecnológico. Y tenemos una oficina que lanzamos, ya tenemos operando dos años para conectar empresas de base científico-tecnológicas que quieren ir a explorar ese mercado. Nuestro hub les ayuda a conectar básicamente con servicios de soft landing que si quieren ir a estar allá y conocer todo este ecosistema, Alfonso Araujo, que ahorita les va a platicar, pues eh, él es el director de la oficina en China y su función allá es conectar con este ecosistema, fondos de gobierno, universidades con las cuales pueden hacer partnership y también con fondos de inversión y con empresas. Lo que buscamos es acelerar que todo este crecimiento y boom que se está dando en Latinoamérica eh, pues podamos explorar más allá del mercado mexicano y latinoamericano a otras regiones asiáticas. Entonces, pues muy contenta de poder el día de hoy enfocarnos a este tema de los dispositivos médicos y cómo está el ecosistema eh, en China y presentar lo que el Job hace, un poco cómo está el panorama de los dispositivos médicos en esa región y bueno, pues los invitados que tenemos que, que son estos aliados de, de, y startups que ya han tenido o han estado en China, pues les van a compartir sus experiencias. Entonces, pues, encantada, bienvenidos y, este, y pues los dejo a continuar con el programa y espero que utilicen todos los apoyos que el Job les puede brindar a la orden. Sí, muchas gracias, Pati. Y antes de ceder la palabra a Alfonso, quien va a hacer la presentación justamente de nuestros invitados que están ya con él en la sala, pues les agradecería a nuestros invitados, a los asistentes al evento, que en el chat pues nos digan de dónde vienen, de qué país o de qué ciudad nos acompañan y de qué organización. Nos ayudaría mucho a entender desde dónde nos están escuchando. Sabemos que hay personas de diferentes países igual que se han conectado de diferentes ciudades del Estado. Entonces, si nos regalan ahí un comentario en el chat de qué ciudad, de qué organización, y, y, y nos servirá mucho para, para conocerlos y recordarles que están los espacios abiertos para eh, poder platicar en el Q&A. Entonces, eh, Alfonso, pues solamente la indicación para los invitados que nos escuchan en tu, en tu lugar, pues de acercarse al micro para poder tener claridad. Los escuchamos muy bien en, en la prueba. Uh, welcome. Uh, we would like to uh, uh, say you thank you because uh, this opportunity to uh, have a, a, a better knowledge of this ecosystem uh, of healthcare in, in China. Um, there are a lot of companies in, in Mexico, but also in Latin that show uh, interest to know new markets. And China is a big potential market for new products and new innovation. We appreciate the possibility to, to talk with you uh, concerning the different uh, activities of the potential of this ecosystem. Welcome, uh, Alfonso Araujo, and thank you uh, to our guest. Hello, good night there in Mexico. Uh, it's good morning here in China. It's uh, eight in the morning. And you can see we're here at the conference room in the IHOP Tech, where we have a platform for uh, joining together efforts in science and technology between Mexico and Latin America and Chinese companies. So thank you everybody for your time. Uh, we're going to start by talking a little bit about the general situation of the medical device industry in China. So we're going to see a little bit of uh, regulations and procedures. For this, we will see a presentation sent to us by Dr. Doris Sun, she's not here right, right now with us, but this is her presentation. She will probably be joining us in a, a little bit later for, for answering questions. So feel free to take notes and ask um, and make, make your, your questions about this topic. Uh, for this presentation, I introduce you to Mr. Uni Zhao from uh, Zhejiang University's IPX, which is uh, IP Exchange. It's a branch of the Zhejiang University that helps um, local and foreign companies uh, transfer technology. 
people that create new technologies, they are, they are those who help them to take it out into the industry. So he's an expert and this uh, material was made by Ms. Dorison, who is an expert in medical device startups. So, uh, Mr. Oh. All right, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, I uh, also thank you, uh, the center. I've been here for many times and uh, just enjoyed the friendship and also looks like uh, China will benefit from technology development uh, in Mexico and in uh, general in America. China, the market is big, Chinese companies are hungry for technology, yes, lots of technology are developed here, but at the same time, China, China can always use a lot more technologies. So hopefully we can help to um, promote this. Now, the topic we uh, that's developed by Lars is more narrow because she's, second slide, she's ex experienced, um, this slide. okay, uh, okay. She, she, she's a serial uh, co-founder of uh, medical device startups. Currently, she's uh, operating a startup that's originally from the US, American technology. And also, she, she's experienced in building consortium by this company. She, she holds a master's degree from the UK, and also a bachelor's degree in engineering, actually, from the uh, here. So China has been catching up in a sense uh, then what I witnessed, uh, I spent many years in Los Angeles you know, back in the 90s and uh, later, I witnessed the surge of technology here in China. So uh, e even 10 years ago, the topic of AI and the medicine to Chinese audience was pretty rare, but, but now Chinese companies are showing their strength and one particular here, uh, the news is there are 18, for the last 18 months, so it's a one and a half, right? from early 2020, AI, there, there has been 15 medical devices approved as class three medical, uh, medical devices by the uh, Chinese authority. Now, these are AI medical devices specifically. If we look at back, I think in early 2020, the, the American FDA approved first one or two. That's about the same time frame. But my understanding uh, is since that time, in America, FDA has been not very fast in approving new AI medical devices. But in China, it looks like the administration is more aggressive. And uh, there are some recent ones. And let, if you count the 2020 first half that's lost to the pandemic, it's a time work. So the administration has been really fast. Maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's not, we don't know, it's a new thing. Uh, so again, here's the stats. By June 2021, so that's last month, uh, 15 AI medical devices have been approved. So let's take a look at some of this uh, uh, events here. So here are the roster of those companies who have got approvals. Many of these companies did not exist 10 years ago. Uh, and most of them, if I look around, I, I look at the data, most of them are based in Beijing. Uh, there's a big reason for that, I think. A, Beijing has many top universities. And if you look at AI, also they have top hospitals in Beijing. And finally, I would say, because the regulators are in Beijing. So these are uh, factors, I think, that push these companies uh, be the front runners in the AI medical, uh, medical devices field. And uh, there are a few in uh, Shanghai. Again, Shanghai is a hub of many, many top hospitals and universities. And also uh, in, in the city of Hangzhou, which uh, uh, our son herself is on, talking about the many startups too, but they're not as advanced in the stage of getting approval. So here's a roster, uh, some of the companies. Now, I list them uh, for one reason because some of these have gone IP already. Oh, they're <laughs> oh, they're <laughs> okay. uh, I still talked uh, to the last slide just a little bit. In China, another thing about what's going on in China is the capital market, the stock exchange has been also aggressive again. Uh, about a year and a half ago, 
the star board that's specifically for hardcore technology startups to go IPO. Uh, the board started about one and a half years ago. By now, there are 250 companies that have gone IPO on that particular board at the Shanghai Stock Exchange. It's relatively new, uh, but those companies, if you take a look at of course, some of these uh, companies on this list have been listed on that uh, stock market already. Now, those uh, that, that uh, particular board for that stock exchange, particularly, again, pushed for hardcore hard technologies. If you look at the stats, on average, a company listed on that stock exchange, I mean, on that particular board, Star Wars, so now, for science technology, they have on average have more than 50 invention patents. That's a number I track uh, pretty down there. 50 invention patents in China, even in China, so that's a lot for a young company. So, so I just want to uh, point that out to this audience uh, that right now, that's one thing in China, the capital market, uh, the investors, and eventually when you go public, people do look at things like intellectual property. And also for the medical device, of course, you have to get the approval from the administration. So these are things that these companies are pretty mature to play. Again, let me point out once again, many of those companies will not exist 10 years ago. They are very new. So if, uh, if I may, sure. uh, I, I just want to make it the point that Mr. Thales is uh, doing right now that I don't know if you can picture that, but in the last 10 years, so many companies in medical devices have not only cropped up in China, not only uh, been created, but uh, IPO. That means going to the stock market. Uh, that, that's in less than 10 years. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's a very, very impressive thing to do because for you to go to the stock market, you need hundreds of millions of dollars. Not only yeah, the other material. That's, and I think it's, it's 200 million RME uh, a year in the ground. Or so, 100. So, yeah. The point is that the, the industry is growing exponentially. Yes. Another thing about the echo is. I, that's why I, sometimes I say China speed. I live this because I, you know, I used to spend many years in Los Angeles. That's the early 2000s or that. Uh, Silicon Valley, California, speed, right? But here in China and in the city like Hangzhou, 10 million population. It added like half million population just one year last year. Right? So things are moving really fast, and most of the companies are are you know, private companies. Right, right. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's another thing. Most of the startups here in China, of course, is, is venture, VC, venture capital guy that's yeah. going to start. So, okay, let's go to the next slide. So, here is a listing for people who understand medical devices. Now, I personally do not, <laughs> but here is the information. Uh, on the left, left hand side is in Chinese, and right hand side uh, is in English. Oh, no, sorry. sorry. Uh, on the left side is the devices. In, in, these are, there are about 15 AI medical devices that have been approved by the administration. Uh, there are another 20 or so, 25 or so, there's waiting for approval. So are they in good, good stage already? And uh, among them, in terms of some disciplines, in terms of medical fields, on the left hand side is devices. So Again, I'm not going to go through everything, but you can see it's, it's across many disciplines. And on the right hand side, it's for software specifically. There are concepts called software as a method device. I think it was in America, US FDA started that concept like two, three years ago. So in China, there are a bunch of companies working on that also. So here we will be consistent. Again, it looks like it's across many fields also. Uh, I, I think one thing here in China is there are enough engineers, enough number of engineers can work on these companies, and eventually they achieve the results. So if, if you can see there in the, that list, you, you may notice that there's a lot of, of things that are going on in imaging. So when, yes, when you go yeah. to uh, yes. medical device expos, you can see that half of the expo is uh, focused on devices, both devices and, and software, right. focused on imaging. So right. that's a very, very uh, well, One reason is come from technology point of view, AI, successful AI applications, uh, imaging, image recognition has been very advanced. So it, 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 it makes sense. 
And also, I would imagine in, in medical, in hospitals, or in medical research, solving imaging problem is important. So both come together. But it also you can see CT scan on that. That's a little bit, sometimes it's not just imaging. Sometimes it's analyzing data across time. So it's a little bit different from imaging. But the other thing about here is a variety of AI tools, recognizing images, recognizing text, that's for decision making. Uh, for the idea of Watson, we're talking about uh, everything is being tried here in China by all kinds of companies. Next slide, please. So, who is the regulator? So, we're getting into some of the dry details, and especially for people who practice in this field, this is very basic information, but important too. And formerly known as the Chinese China FDA, uh, there's a new name probably two years, uh, National Medical Products Administration. So here, there is a screenshot of their website. Also uh, below is the English, so National Medical Products Administration. You can see they do new medicine, drugs, they do medical devices, not surprising. And they regulate co cosmetics also. I personally do not know why, but they do. And before, uh, with the CFDA, the, the D would this F was food, right? So it looks like the food part has been moved outside of this bureau. Anyway, so it's the National Medical Products Administration that's the regulator in this field. Let's go next slide, please. So just this month, uh, in, in, in July, actually, July the 1st, I hardly believe because that's where the Chinese party was still busy with the celebration. But anyway, little, little, uh, little code knowledge. Uh, but anyway, so the, the, the administration, National uh, Medical Progress Administration, just set, uh, uh, set out a very brief note on guiding principles. So what exactly are artificial intelligence medical software products? It's very arcane, very uh, industry-specific, very narrow thing. Uh, but, but the good thing is they did come out to, to give this uh, clarification, uh, how do you define uh, software as a medical device? But the software as a medical device in America, uh, sorry, but, uh, in China, it's AI medical software products. I think, no, I think no, that's, that's how the administration defines it. Let's go to the next slide. So a few details, again, uh, understand for this presentation, uh, maybe people do welcome this kind of very dry, very detailed knowledge. Now, so uh, if you look through the, the recent guiding principles, it's not very long. If you print out, it's like three pages. Uh, it's adding up to the existing regulation. So here is a core note. A, how do you know a particular product, a software? Product? How do you know a particular software should be treated as a medical device. So this 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 sentence gives the definition. So uh, I'm not gonna go through everything, but here is the idea. So hey, this software is you use this software to process medical device data. So that's the first uh, part of this definition. Uh, B is a software does processing, measuring, uh, model calculation, analysis of that. Okay. So that's what the software does. A is what's the input? Input is medical device data. B is uh, software does what software does, which is analysis, model analysis. And then also, finally, this software is used for medical purposes. It, it makes sense, but they have to point it out. Right? It's not for consumer product, it's not for product. Right? So then, then if it follows the yada yada. So then again, this sentence. It's a, the translation is not perfect. It's a machine translation, by the way. Uh, but uh, the idea is in this regulation, they made it clear if you want to call a piece of software a software as a medical device, here is the definition. Let's go to the next slide. Now, then once I know a particular thing is, called, is a medical device, the regulation gives more detail way of treating how to regulate that medical device. And it's, it's uh, 
their, their concept of administration a mature class. So usually uh, for people who are in this trade, they say this very often. As a, as a class one or class two or class three as administrator, no. Class three is the most, most difficult. Usually it gets into the body and swallow and stuff. Or you burn a thin skin and this kind of thing. But people who understand, I would imagine, okay, I'm not from this field. But I would imagine this, this administrative uh, uh, classes are very much in align or similar enough with American CFA. Actually, for people who are interested in, in the type one, two, and three class uh, kinds of devices, we are going to go into that in the third part of the, of the event. No, I got because I got right now, this is a sample of uh, one kind of, of uh, device, which I includes know, which artificial intelligence. Right. So this is one of the easiest to go through the regulations. But you know, in, in general, medical, medical industry requires a lot of regulations. So we're going to go into that into some detail. Uh, right, right. Very soon. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll correct it. Okay. Now let's go to the next slide. Uh, then here it gives the details. Uh, if you look the, how the regulator classify an AI medical device as class three versus class two. So just like any other devices, it needs this kind of classification. Okay, let's go next. So here back to the basics. The administration gave this category and classification list on medical devices. It's a very long category and people study this, which, which part of it. Let's, let's go to the next slide. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, if you go to history, the major version was, uh, was, was done back in 2017. So after that it has been Lots of numerous changes. Let's watch. Let's go to the next slide. Let's go to the next slide. So there are, there are 22 sub uh, catalogs. Again, once I would imagine uh, the US FDA will be very much like that. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. When people understand this field, that's probably the uh, straightforward. Oh, uh, number 20, that's Chinese me uh, medicine equipment, thank you very much. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the next slide. So here's a particular one example. Uh, event is some laser surgery stuff, but I just want to give some feel. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So the subcategory belongs to active surg uh, surgical instruments, the serial orders, you know, two. Level one uh, category is it's a laser equipment, Level two is, is the laser equipment again, okay, in this case. And finally, these are usual product names, uh, transmission devices, uh, controls, protective devices. Yeah, just, just so sure. to go into, into the matter that we're discussing, which is uh, China cooperating with other countries, this kind of example, this is, a, this is an active surgical instrument. Yeah, yeah. So uh, every country has kind of a, the US it's the FDA, no? but here we call it the Chinese FDA. Right. In Mexico, we call it COPEPRIS. Uh, here we call it the Mexico FDA. So uh, the problem with um, devices which are type one, two, or three, uh, the one that goes inside your body that uh, punctures your skin oh. or has to go some, somehow inside, that's right. the most difficult. Right. So right. It usually, even if you have your own approval in your own country, you usually have to make a whole lot, a whole new approval in China. So, for example, um, this kind of devices which are based on AI, uh, what you need to do is testing, but the testing is non invasive, so that it's uh, it's faster to do. But if you have a device that is uh, going into your body, that, then the testing takes much longer. And sometimes we have we have found out that sometimes they they would prefer to just import the whole device rather than uh, manufacturing in China oh. because you have to start from uh, from under zero. Uh, uh, another so, another process. A process. So, generally speaking, when, when we are cooperating with China in medical devices, we cannot have like um, one rule fits all. Uh, we. Every, every every kind of project has its own uh, complexities. Uh, some projects are very easy. For example, um, a little bit later, we're going to talk about an exoskeleton. 
that's very easy because that's something outside of your body that helps you move. Right? But something just I mean, uh, a drug is very difficult. And something in between is something that helps you do some operations. So there's a whole range of uh, complexities that, that uh, we have to take into account for every particular project. Right. Exactly, exactly. So this is why this tech hub is for, that, to help people from outside China to land here in China. Right. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So continue with this particular example, uh, expanded use and also examples. So for people who are in this trade now, I said it's pretty straightforward. But finally, it's the, in the administrative class, three. So you can imagine, because this is a laser thing, eventually it cuts the screen open and there's a lot of things. So that should be it. What's the next slide? Oh, yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, can you, can you hear us? Perfect. Thank you, thank you, Alfonso. Um, I, I am going to speak in Spanish to our uh, guest. If you, si tiene alguna pregunta, algún alguna pregunta que quieran hacerle a nuestros invitados, pueden por favor eh, ponerla en la sección de Q&A. Nosotros la uh, dirigiremos vía Alfonso a, a nuestros invitados para que puedan eh, justamente hacerla. Um, in the moment, I, I, I would like to, to understand. Um, how, uh, what is the, the main potential of medical device industry at this moment in, in, in China? And if you consider from LATAM, uh, you, you can um, identify uh, some specific technologies who are coming to your market from, from LATAM uh, uh, companies at this moment? Yes, uh, we have been here for over two years promoting uh, several kinds of products for the medical industry. And there's a lot, as you said, uh, the, the medical device industry is uh, just exploding here in China. And they're eager to find new technologies and people with which to cooperate. We have found there's uh, a lot of attention being paid to devices. Uh, for, for drugs, I would, I would like to just that. That's a whole separate topic that's very, very difficult and takes a lot of investment. But for medical devices, um, we have found a, a lot of um, receptiveness to it. We have shown, for example, an exoskeleton or smart wheelchairs that we're going to talk about uh, further down the line. We have found um, uh, new, new designs, new engineering improvements for, for devices that are done, are used in operations or in the everyday version of a hospital, uh, even devices that process uh, hospital waste, for example, there's interest in that. Uh, some devices done for diagnosis, or uh, as we, we saw in this particular case, devices that use AI, uh, artificial intelligence used in diagnosis. That's a very important uh, topic right now. We have two uh, projects which are actually, uh, we are actually promoting with AI, and two more which use um, uh, big data processing for, for monitoring patients and more monitoring uh, disease across populations. So I would say that these are the, the main interests for medical devices in China. And the, the thing to take away from this first part is the industry is exploding. There's a lot of interest. And um, you can come to China, find a partner, that can help you uh, do, the, do the late stage testing and entering a very, very big market. Perfect. Um, Daniel Zuniga asked us in the, in the in, in chat, um, if I am working with a Chinese partner who built our product, how can I make sure that they actually did the validation of this uh, product? This, um, this is all very, very tightly regulated, actually. Uh, if you want to do some medical device related things, it's, it's really strict. So that, that's the existing regulation. Plus, we are here actually to help you uh, 
um, uh, uh, review the, uh, all the parts of the process, meaning from zero, from contract, from IP protection, from quality control, from contract signing. So there's a there's a very detailed procedure to follow, and uh, this industry in particular is very very uh, strict about its procedures. Perfect. And also, last question before to 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 the next presentation. Um, um, Oscar, uh, no, Alvaro Rios asked us um, if if I am running a, a software. Uh, our um, own software based on in, in, um, artificial intelligence running in a actual hardware. What kind of device is concerning uh, Chinese regulation? And in that case, a specific case, how, how long is the time to, 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 to get an, an, an approval for Chinese uh, regulatory institutions? If it's, if it's an AI, device, it, it depends on what kind of function the AI performs. For example, we have a device that identifies chemical markers in the body. That's one thing, but a different software does that data processing. So because they're different, it takes, it takes, different, it takes a, a different amount of time to test them here in China. So they, they are all type three devices, which means they are not anything inside the body but uh, the actual time it takes to test them it will depend on whether the the ai is in the device or it's just a uh, software processing data so i cannot give a single answer to this it, it will depend on the nature of the, of the, the software perfect thank you thank you Yunitao, and thank you alfonso we are continuing now with uh coyote coyote bioscience uh, Min Yang and Sabrina Lee are here for the next presentation. So please, Alfonso, we can continue. Yes. Actually, uh, I want to welcome Ms. Ms. Doris Sun. She, she just joined us here. So uh, if, if you guys want to make some other questions for the third part of the, of the event regarding uh, regulations or uh, medical device procedure, uh, she will be here and uh, she can answer questions in the third part. Now, Perfect. I want to uh, welcome Mr. Min Yang from, from uh, Coyote Bioscience. It's, it's a pity that uh, Ms. Lee, Ms. Sabrina Lee, she had a, an urgent uh, matter just now. She just called us like a half an hour ago. So um, we're very sorry about that. But Mr. Min Yang is a very, is a high executive there at the Coyote Bioscience. And he's been there almost from the beginning. So he can, he's now going to tell us about the, um, this fascinating story about how they they went from zero to being one of the leaders actually now in China in um, uh, diagnosis. Thank you, Mr. Alfonso again um, for the invitation. And it's really my pleasure to speak um, to all of you. And um, my name is Min, I'm a chief of staff and director of strategy and development at Coyote Bioscience. And here we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, how the company was founded and how, you know, the founder, how the team has navigated the market in China and, and excelled and succeeded um, uh, from, the, from the standpoint of a, of a startup um, going from zero to one and one to 10. Um, so the company was founded in 2009. It was when the founder was a student actually in, in the United States. Um, but let me share the screen first. Can I share my screen? Yes, actually yes. we are seeing it. We are sharing okay. a screen. Yeah. My so version is probably the, uh, the latest one. If I can share my screen, that would be great. Could you try me? Can you see? Yes, go ahead. Okay, continue. Um, so the company was founded in 2009 and the founder was a student at the UCSD San, in UC San Diego uh, in the United States. And she was studying molecular biology and she, she was so fascinated by, you know, there's a huge trend in technology in terms of making, um, making diagnostics different. 
um, at, at the time it's called PCR testing. Um, right now it's pretty common, but at that time it's a very advanced technology and she was very passionate about it and she wanted to do something about it. And as a, as a student, she already published a lot, of, a lot of papers and found, you know, publishing paper not very challenging because um, at the time the students and the lab is already at, the, you know, at the, at the top of the industry. And, and she figured that, you know, she doesn't want to spend more time, you know, being a PhD student and being a professor. Um, she has a, she has the technology already. She has the knowledge and China, you know, is a big market. So she decided to go back to China to build a company. Um, when she returned to China, she um, built, she built a team of, of about five and then gradually and until 2013, it grew to about 10. It's still a very small company. You know, it, it's called, we call, we kept, call that stage R&D bootstrapping because it's literally bootstrapping. It's, it's a bunch of you know, entrepreneurs in, in their 20s, you know, early 30s um, with a dream coming back to China. And, and, and it, there, there was some good policy in China to encourage uh, entrepreneurship. So she, she was given some grants from the government and was given, you know, a, 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 a office and the, and the lab to operate and do a development. Um, in 2013, um, the first milestone is, you know, we came up with the first generation of our product. It's called Mini 8. It's a very tiny uh, molecular diagnostics machine that has eight channels. And, uh, you know, the biggest strength of it is very small. And with, with that protocol being developed, we started to raise funds from top venture capital funds from China, including Northern Light Venture Capital and Saif Partners. These are um, pretty, pretty top uh, VCs in China. So if you haven't heard of them and if you go to China, um, there may be, you know, they, they may be interested in backing some of the technologies as well. They, they invest uh, quite actively. And in 2000. 16, we finally got our first MNP approval like uh, Mr. Cao introduced. Uh, MNPA is very strict in China, um, often, often surprising people um, that it's, it's sometimes it's even stricter than FDA. It's really hard to get MNPA approval. So we try really hard um, and we finally got the first MNPA approval. And that means we can start selling our product and start making revenues. And in 2018, we founded our Clear Lab, which is, you know, then, then we, we, we can, as a lab, we can do, provide services and we can, you know, make, make uh, diagnostics. We can do testing for people. And in 2019, we had more research projects going on. We won the national grant um, and national infectious diseases R&D projects with some of the top institutions in China. And in 2020, um, so when COVID hit the, hit the world, we quickly developed our second generation product. It's called Flash 20, which brought us to the stage um, of, you know, of a lar much larger operations and much larger market. Um, it, you know, it, it's contributed um, by the second generation product, which is called Flash 20. Um, it's, a, it's a four channel, um, four panel, um, device and it tests it, it's the fastest PCR testing in China even in the world it takes only 30 minutes to get to the results and only takes two steps and the product is very innovative and very fast it's considered um, it's categorized as rapid PCR in the eyes of M MNPA so for a long time they haven't approved this product this kind of product, they've never approved any of them until 2020 July, when we got approved with first rapid PCR testing machine that was approved um, in, in China. So after that, our sales um, skyrocketed and grew really, really quickly um, because at the time, you know, COVID came, the, suddenly the, the users are, are educated from the markets open up and it's a really good product. So suddenly, you know, it's still, um, we, 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 have, we have some tractions. And now we're developing the third platform. Um, the protocol is already made, is going to even be faster. It's going to take about 15 minutes to get to the results. 
and again more reagents we we we're developing um being approved next slide um so when when we're thinking about you know what to build right we have a lot of knowledge and we have a lot of um, um we have a dream we want to make uh, molecular testing available for everyone that is a little like the development of personal computer so imagine 30 years ago the personal computer is so big so huge it's like a box it, it takes a whole room and think about the personal computer now so your mobile phone is essentially a, a personal computer it's more powerful than you know the first generation you know desktop um, pc computer um, and it's over the years, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, getting more and more accessible, um, more easy, um, easier to use um, day by day. So our dream is to make diagnostics smaller, just like how the personal computer has evolved from a big machine to a small machine. Our first generation product is called Mini 8. Again, it's very small. It's basically as big as the laptop and it, you can take it anywhere. Um, the second generation, as you see, it, it, when, you, when you put them in the case, you can travel with them. The second generation is the instant gene. So I wanna talk about this because this is failure because it's too, it, it's too advanced in, in terms of uh, patient acceptance. Um, it's very, it's even smaller. It's, it's just like a scanner, a barcode scanner, a very small, at the time, we 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 came up with the with this product in 2014, um, and it, it was not able to get approved because it's too innovative, and also it's really hard to get users because users at the time are still learning what traditional PCR is. You know, not to mention this kind of you know very small, very they would be like you know the the question is, you know, what is this? You know, what is PCR? How can I use PCR to help my 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 work? You know, the doctors will ask this question. Um, so this 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 proved to be a failure, and we learned a lot from it because we maybe we're too ahead in in the market and too ahead in in the market development um, journey. So lessons learned. These are some of the um, media coverage in China um, on the founder because she's. She's, she was very young at the time, and she graduated from Beijing University, one of the best universities in China, and she was very brave coming back to China. So some, some old photos, nostalgic. Well, the next, next slide is um, finally we have our Flash 20. It's a, a, our flagship, flagship product. It's uh, very fast, you know, one minute sample prep, 30 minute sample, the results, very accurate, um, very flexible as well, you know, has four independent sample analyzers and it allows random access, which means you don't need to wait until all the samples are collected. You can test one sample at a time. Um, when you have another sample coming in, you open up another channel, you put it in, very simple. And it's very safe because the, all the reaction process is fully enclosed, which means it, you know, this little, you know, tiny printer sized machine um, can do what the lab is, you know, traditionally is doing. So it, it essentially synthesizes, you know, uh, a lot of machines and integrate them into one machine. Um, and the processes going on are, are enclosed within the machine. That's why it's safe. It, it prevents uh, contamination and human error. Well, the next is it's really portable. It's like a printer, very, very, very light, very small. And it's, uh, you know, we we have users, you know, take, taking the machine to Africa um, to where, where there's no lab requirement. And it's very uh, efficient as well. It's very, very low risk of contamination, like I said. Well, the, the core technology that we've been developing from day one is how to increase the speed and make the process faster. And it's, it's essentially, we finally found um, a proprietary uh, technology. It's, it's called, uh, we call them the, the parallel, uh, parallel molecular reaction, which means the traditional, the conventional PCR, um, it's in series. 
the steps, the reactions are in series. So we have cell lysis and, and then we uh, extract the RNA and then we do synthesis and then we do qPCR. And now is we combine them all, we do them together at the same time. So when you know a, a, a portion of the cells um, they, they went through cell lysis, then um, that uh, that portion will go automatically to to RNA, RNA extraction, while another portion of the the sample is doing the first step. That's how we got we, from from a um, from 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 a methodology standpoint, we made it faster. Another comparison, um, we have the conventional one on the left and the flash detect, which is our technology on the right. Um, on the left side, you see there, you know, to finish a PCR testing, you need multiple instruments. You need a PCR, um, PCR machine, you need a, a centrifuge, you need a um, RNA extractor, but our product you know, takes these machines into one, integrates them into one. And the traditional one, it takes seven steps of sample prep. It takes more than 30 minutes to pre prepare. And for us, because you know we're using molecular par parallel reaction, um, it takes the, the procedure down to two steps. Um, and in terms of human requirement, in the past, the conventional one, it requires three to five lab professionals and because um, our machine is so small, very easy to use, it takes only one operator. Well, a little comparison um, with um, the other products that are doing similar things. Um, the one, one of the, the best selling product in the world, you know, things that the product that we, we look up to that, that we want to surpass is, is called the Cephi Gene Expert. It was used basically everywhere in the world especially um, for infectious diseases and for lung diseases. Um, it's, it's very well developed and it's, it's been there in the market for about 20, 20 years. And Cefid, um, I, their, their revenue last year, I remember is, um, is 2.3 billion USD, um, pretty, pretty large. Um, well, with some comparisons that we, we already, you know, from a lot of perspective have surpassed Gene expert. Well, first of all, is the speed. You know, it's thirty minutes, and Gene expert is forty-five minutes, and our ac accuracy rate is about the same. Um, and our um, the 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 low the lowest dose that's required um, from the sample um, is also similar. But from the cost standpoint, we about one tenth of the cost manufacturing cost um, as Steffi. So as you can imagine, when we enter the market, we, we try to be faster and be more cost effective um, to, to be able to penetrate market. And because of in China, we have, you know, from, from, the, from the labor standpoint and also from the technology standpoint, um, we were able to um, achieve a very low cost and very fast um, result. And, and yeah. And we've been the product has been used in conferences and sports events and also airport train stations in hospitals, clinic, ICU, um, community health center um, has been validated in, in all these clinical or non clinical um, scenarios. So ever since we were founded, we have contributed to, to multiple epidemics or pandemics um, in the past decade from Ebola to swine flu to, to Zika to COVID-19. Um, we, we've been contributing to the, these, um, at the fight against these pandemics. For example, um, for example, Zika. Um, when Zika came out um, and China was really afraid, and then we are the first technology that was used to detect Zika. And our products actually was purchased by the custom system in China and was placed in, inside the, the customs in the airport and in some of the some of the uh, custom stations um, to, to detect. And we, our technology detected the first Zika case in China. We're very proud about it. And of course, COVID, you know, we've done so much in, in, in China and around the world and continue doing so. And we have entered more than 47 countries um, by now. And, you know, achieved market authorizations from China, from Indonesia, from, from the European Union, um, and for 
uh, for countries in, in Latin, we, we entered Colombia and we, we just hire our full-time employees in Mexico um, and in, in Argentina and South Africa is um, a very big market and we want to um, contribute to the um, infectious diseases and to, to COVID and, to, um, and to, to help address and to meet unmet needs in Latin America. Well, our next generation of products, because as a technology company, the products right now um, is in the market is making the revenue and using the revenue, we want to look into the future to guarantee that we can survive and we can continue to serve our users in the future. So that's why we really emphasize um, R&D. And we focus on three parts. The first part is we want to make our machines faster and easier to use, even faster. 30 minutes is not even enough. So we, we've been putting a lot of uh, investment into this and to try to make it faster. Well, the next generation product, like I said, is already able to, to achieve a, uh, PCR testing within, third, uh, within 15 minutes. And our team is working really hard to make it more stable, um, make the technology more reliable um, from a quality control and quality and assurance um, standpoint. Um, and the protocol is already made. We will try to get it approved by fourth quarter, but we'll see. Nobody can predict um, anything about um, MAPA in China. Uh, the, second gener uh, the second direction is we want to make uh, our product more un unattended, meaning more meaning easier to use and even doesn't require any human beings. So this this machine, this station like you like you see there is about um, two meters uh, long and about two meters high, two meters tall. And it what it can do is that it can test more than a hundred thousand samples a day just you know with this very tiny machine and with um, very minimal human human interaction which means that the which means when you when you get the sample from people you put the sample into the machine and that's it you press a button and that's it it's going to run to the end um, to get to the results um, again you know the protocol is already made it's going to hopefully get approved soon well and third direction is we it's called the Internet of Things, uh, it's hospital infection control system, because there, you know, hospital is a place where a lot of infections happen, and we want to mo uh, monitor them, and and the machines are only part of them, but information system and other sensors are very important. So we want to make the whole, make it a total solution to be used in the hospital, so that you know the hospital can rely on this you know, single total solution to control the infections. Well, these are some of the uh, media coverage um, from some from Sky News, the British um, media and from China's um, CCTV, which is China's, you know, uh, mainstream, mainstream media. Um, and the, and the, the, the professor in the middle she, uh, he's, he's the director of China's uh, infectious diseases uh, control center. And she, uh, he really likes our product and he sits on the board uh, on, on the advisory um, role for us as well. Well, th th that's all. Um, thank you very much. And if you have any questions about Chinese markets and about how to build a technology company in healthcare, in diagnostics, in anything, please let me know. Um, or Sabrina, no, um, we'll be here, you know, to to answering some questions, and and if you send emails to us, we'll we'll, we'll reply promptly. Perfect. Thank you very much. Me, yes, go ahead, Alfonso. Okay, so uh, as you can see, this is an example of uh, of a um, company based on technology. It's um, uh, it's a success story, which is very impressive. Now you can see that the technology is very solid course and you can see how it's being developed but I'm guessing that most of the people who are watching us their the question in their minds is Mr. Minyang what would you say uh, you have the technology you have the research you did all all these things but what would you say was the biggest challenge to actually go from that very solid research very good products into the market and not just that but in 
transforming yourself into a into a, a very important player in the market. What would you say was the, the most critical, the most difficult uh, part of the procedure? That's a really good question because oftentimes there in the world there's so many good technologies, right? And from technology to product to market, in each step, it's so hard. It's so hard. For example, from technology to product, um, we've, like I said, you know, one example of our failure, right, is, is actually we don't know the market and we developed a, a product using our technology, but the product, nobody needs the product. It's too early. We don't know. Maybe in, in maybe right now the product is able to uh, penetrate the market or, you know, or, or make a big sell. I don't know, but it, it was already a failure at the time. It, it's six or seven years ago and the product was too heavy. Too, too far ahead um, in, in, the, in the development of, of user education. So what that means, it's called the product market fit. Are you developing a market that fits the need of the market? Because ultimately it's the market that needs the product. And, and product development takes time. So you really need to not only look at what the market needs now, but also what the market needs in about five or 10 years, right? Because you need to take into account of, you know, by the time your product comes out, it's already five years or three years later, or two years later, and then it's already, you know, it's already too old. The, the technology maybe it's already too too slow, and your competitors are already, you know, they're, they're faster than you or they're more accurate than you. So we need to take into account of that. And second is, you know, again about product, is about what market are you going into because each market has different needs. For example, in China. Our product was designed for China. Um, but when we try to enter Africa, we learned a lesson. We try to enter Africa right now. We've been talking to Gates Foundation and World Health Organization. And one lesson we learned is that hmm, something is not, not suitable to the market from a product standpoint because, because our product, the reagents, it needs to, to be co-chained to, you know, to, to, to the hospitals, which means it, you know, it needs transportation. But, but in Africa, as you know, you know, the infrastructure is really bad. Needing a cold chain is a huge, huge disadvantage for us. So that's why we, we, you know, we quickly build a team to, to, to try to make, um, make sort of you know, the reagent more easier to, to transport um, and maybe changing it from a liquid to, to, some, uh, to, to solid. And that, that, that's one point. Second is our reagents needs to be prepped by properly by professionals. We think uh, we have a lot of pro professionals in China. It's not well. It's it's not it's not that difficult. A lot of people can do that. You know, people with some you know undergraduate degree or even even below the uh, undergraduate degree can can be trained and do that. We think it's easy. And we go when we go to Africa when we when we talk to the uh, professionals over there. They're like, this is too hard. You need to give me something that's already preloaded. And I just want something that's preloaded over here and I put my sample there and I put it in the machine. So we need to go one step further to do that. And we're currently developing the market, uh, developing the product for that. So like I said, um, to answer a question, I think you know, from technology to product, very important. And, and the second part is from product. Well, actually, we're getting a lot of questions for you, and sure. I think this is a very, very wide topic, and uh, we should we should go into that a little bit later. Uh, I think we are going to receive a lot of questions, but uh, hopefully, we can we can later put them all in, in a nice structure that you can you can take a look. Alfonso, may I? Just, just a specific question for the audience. Juan Pablo Aguilar asked concerning the, your technology, if, uh, have you ever worked with a human papilloma virus? And if you have a POC solution for virus detection? Okay, so the fir first question is HPV. Um, do we have HPV reagents? Yes, HPV. Um, we, we do, we do. We have, we have the, um, the reagent um, in diagnostics is actually uh, in, in PCR, um, platform. It's not very hard to develop uh, the reagent to um, to test different, you know, uh, diseases because it's essentially, you know, you're taking out the R and D uh, or 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 
but that you're taking out the, the RNA from, from the sample and you're trying to identify the sequence um, of, of, the, uh, of the piece of it. Does it, does it meet um, the, the sequence of the target that, that you're trying to, to identify? Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, we have, we have um, the technology for, for um, HPV detection. Uh, it's not approved yet because um, in China, it's really hard to get that these approved. Uh, it takes a long time. Uh, it takes a lot of, uh, you need to do a clinical trials and everything. So we have the technology and we, um, we have the pipeline and we need to follow the, you know, our, our plan, right? We plan, I don't have the plan yet um, in, in, in front of me, but the HPV is definitely in the pipeline and we're going to register them very soon in China. But we can, but given, um, but given we already have the technology, we can register them outside of China as well. And that is also the plan. And what is the second question again? Um, pardon me. Uh, it was concerning, uh, do you have um, POC solutions for virus detection? Virus. Virus detection, detection POC solutions. Yes, um, this is essentially the whole system is a point of care solution. Um, point of care, it means that um, it, it has different meanings, different people. Um, but point of care, essentially, generally speaking, it, it speaks to you know a, a, a machine that's generally smaller, easier to use, which means you can take it anywhere, and it it's uh, easy to use as well. It probably has very you know as kind of you know small uh, a small number of steps um, to finish the process, and our platform is essentially a point of care platform, right? It's faster. 30 minute and it's smaller, like a printer. And we're trying to make them even smaller. And in terms of procedure, we're trying to make them, you know, we it's already two steps process, but we're trying to make it more point of point of care is um, how how the consumables, you know, are made. Like I said, you know, the Africa, Africa case, it's because we're not point of care enough to meet the, the Africa needs. That's why we're trying to make it more, even more point of care. Thank you. Alfonso, uh, that's uh, the, the questions we have until now. Go ahead okay. with the panel, please. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Minyan. Um, as I said, this, this topic actually is very, very extensive. We, we should we could be here for hours, but um, we're going to take into account all, all the questions that we are seeing that people are asking, and we're asking both here yeah. and on, uh, on my phone. So, um, we can we can have a conversation. We're going to later share the oh we're sharing the, the contact of our of our speakers. So uh, we can we can go on to the third part of the event. Victor. Yes, Fernando. Yes, Alfonso. Fernando is here also, and and you you can start the panel. Okay. So uh, just to, to start, we have here uh, Miss Jane. I want to introduce you to her. She's a representative from Incubator in China. It's a, it's a very, uh, it's an incubator and it's part of a large uh, conglomerate of companies which are all dedicated to the medical industry. One of the companies makes um, devices for the treatment of liver cancer, but there's a whole, a whole lot of uh, companies which are related and they have this branch called Incubator in China precisely to uh, get a hold of other technologies, both local and from abroad, that they can uh, cooperate with. So uh, Ms. Jane will be the first to uh, introduce, uh, uh, to give her speech because she's a little bit pressed for time. So she will, um, because now we're going to talk about how to make relations in China, what kind of uh, allied uh, strate strategic alliances we can make. And this is a very good example. Yes, Ms. Jane, please. To, we're going to, to share my screen. Yeah, we're going to share a screen. Uh, please let us know if you can see it. I mean, uh, can you stop sharing your screen, please? Thank you. Yeah. Can everyone see your screen? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Alfonso, for inviting me to here to give my speech. Yes, later I will have a meeting, so I need to introduce my website really briefly. And as you can see, we make a website 
called Incubator in China and who we are. I know you guys must know the Y Combinator in US. So we're kind of like YC, but, but specifically in macro area. And what can we do to help the startups? And uh, what are we doing here? Right. Can you help me open the mentors? Incubator in China is a financing platform to help the scientific talents to start their own businesses. We have already invited invited many like successful entrepreneurs and famous investors and some experts in medical area to be our mentors. As you can see, we invite the Mr. Zhao Zhen, the president of CDH, a really famous investment company in China, and Mr. Chen Chi. Yeah, the, the former vice president of GE, and they are our uh, mentors. We also have some experts in sales engineering, diabetes, and tumor treating technology, and so on. So oh, we always like when the entrepreneurs going to review our website, they want to contact somebody like specifically. So you can contact you can contact me. So we are going to organize a meeting for you. And on every Saturday morning, we are going to make a pitching. Like we do the pitching freely and we, we do not charge anything. So here. So here you can see the pictures we did before, like we make the record. So when the investors review our website, they can see the projects, then going to contact them. So how, how can we make, what's our business module and how can we make the profit? And this is our like service for the pitching, finance pitching, we make this but voluntarily, like, uh, it's free for anyone, but for some projects, they what they need is not just the money. They also need the like teams and some uh, resources. So we are going to have a deep cooperation. Like uh, going to we are going to invest in them with some money and we we hold some shares. Then going to have the um, transfer technology and work on the patents and the strategies and. Home. And with this way, we already have a lot of successful cases. Like the Hainan Poly, it's already the one of the famous top listed company in China. And the listed company we invested is the winner Onco. It's the it's a company about tumor treating technology. Yeah. And if you are interested about us, maybe you can contact me here. Here is my here's my email. You can list your question to my email and I will reply you when I see this. Miss Jenny, I think everybody should uh, listening to you uh, uh -huh. has this question in their mind. What what is the basic requirement for somebody to contact you? I mean, they have they are entrepreneurs with mm -hmm. technology projects. Okay. What what would be your basic requirements for okay them. okay because we are focused on the medical area we know it takes a long time and maybe it needs more money so we prefer the project that they have already matured maybe they have they already have done the animal tests and uh, with some data so you can show us yeah because we, we're not really want the uh, project and they just have an idea we want to see they have the data and already have maybe have the products already advanced yeah. well, that's that's uh, for clinical testing that involves animals and humans yeah. well, what about machines like the designs for you, you know, mean the software not software like let's say like uh, like 
needle or uh, mm -hmm. some kind of which is a, a new design mm -hmm. for a machine or a, or a device. Okay, for this kind of uh, device, first we want to see the patent. We already get the patent, mm -hmm. and they already have the products. I mean, the samples. So the can, yeah, yeah. You can you can send uh, samples so we can maybe have a research on this. Yeah. Here, can you show my email then? So everybody, uh, if you're interested in contacting Miss uh, Jane, you can see her email down there, postmaster at incubatorinchina.com. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Alfonso. We share also the, the, the website link in the chat. Okay, it's, uh, it's very important for people that want to contact uh, a, a company like this, to browse through the website, see the kinds of projects they're already uh, successful with. And you know, you have to be able to, to match with, with their interests. Okay? And uh, one, one thing that Ms. Uh, just said is that um, projects, uh, they're usually interested in projects which are at least uh, have done already animal testing or uh, some kind of clinical testing. They're not. Uh, they're not investing in, in early, very early stages. So, Jane, I think you're uh, a little pressed with time. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Um, we can we can continue the discussion with the with the rest of the panelists now. Yes, Alfonso. Uh, actually, there are some questions for the. Uh, for the panel, um, do, do you have it, or uh, I want you want to? Did I read it? A question for who? No, concerning the the the, the guest uh, to your panel, concerning the, the view, the, the the opinion that they have concerning the Mexican market and the relationship with China, for example. Uh, that is a specific question. Also, another one concerning how the innovation ecosystem in China helps a healthcare company to take its technology from laboratory to market. No? We saw Coyote, Coyote Bioscience, maybe the, 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 the governmental the government grants or the VC funds, et cetera, for the specialized sector. Uh, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to answer those questions. And uh, Ms. Fernanda is probably going to chime in also with that because she's part of this uh, project. So now we can, I guess we can just move on to our panelists here. Perfect. To, to go on to those questions. Ms. Jane, thank you very much for being here and sharing with us. I think there's a lot of people who want to contact you. Okay. I'm pretty sure of that. Okay. So, so uh, our, our um, people watching in Mexico and other countries, they're asking us about what what China thinks about uh, the Mexican market. Uh, I guess that you know, uh, there's a lot of recent interest. I mean, a few years ago, China didn't know much of Mexico or Latin American markets for technology. I think it's uh, still a little bit unknown. But recently, uh, there's, there's been a lot of uh, interest in what can be done there especially with uh, you know, shifting relations in the, in the world of right. geopolitics. What, what would you say about the, the potential of Mexico technology? Yeah, well, uh, I'll say what, what I see recently in China, the need. The economy in China is growing really fast. And this pandemic looks like
Víctor, parece que se trabó, ¿verdad? Sí, efectivamente. Eh, tenemos aquí un, un, un tema técnico con, con internet. Eh, esperemos que se resuelva en, en, en un segundo. Alfonso, ¿nos escuchan? Bueno, en lo que nos escuchan. Fernanda, ¿qué? quisiera ver si nos, si nos escuchas tú. Hola, sí, yo sí los escucho. Perfecto, pues mira, vamos a, a improvisar tantito en lo que Alfonso se conecta. Y si puedes platicarnos eh, tu experiencia justamente eh, emprendiendo en, en China y cómo ha sido la relación con el Innovation Hub China. Oh, okay, I'm going to pass to English now. So my name is Fernanda Zapata Murrieta. Uh, I am business director of the company Indy. And uh, we have gotten two funds uh, uh, to start selling in China our products. And um, I'm going to talk about uh, these products a little bit so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the first one, it started with a smart wheelchair, which can be uh, operated by voice commands, by the computer, by eye muscle movements, and by uh, brain signals too. So um, uh, they gave us this uh, grant for start, uh, to start a company in China and start selling this uh, smart wheelchair. And the other technology uh, is exoskeletons, which are a robotic aid for walking and for mus muscular rehabilitation. Okay. Um, uh, I just following up what um, Alfonso was talking about before, about the interests uh, that Chinese um, business people have and um, what has been mentioned before that they are interested in a product in a technology that uh, it's almost ready to sell tomorrow and uh, so we I, I tell you this, this because um we we thought our product was uh, was ready because we have a trl8 that means that our technology has been tested it works correctly and people has used it. So we thought it was ready, but uh, we came with the surprise that it is not. It's not ready to sell, so it's not ready. We are working on the certifications, so it is now ready to, to be sell. And we are now collecting data from doing clinical tests with the um, exoskeletons and with the uh, wheelchair too. And the main topics that they are interested in are artificial intelligence, as it was mentioned before, and very new technology and technology that is better than the one that it's already already here. Um, well, I don't know. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, our experience. It might not be uh, for your case, for your specific case, but I hope this information uh, helps you for your specific uh, technology and product. Um, so uh, I made some points, some topics which are important if you want to make business in, in, in China. Uh, these seven points are not in order, but I think the first one, uh, which is very important if you want to, to, to take your business, your product to China, is um, networking. I gather with my team and we call names for, this, for these topics. The first one is personality-based networking. And I think it's important that, that you that people who you are trying to make business like you, especially if you are a foreigner, you have to, to make them like you because they're going to prefer to make business with, with people they already know. So uh, I think it's important uh, they like you and to take advantage of all the people who is helping you, all the people uh, at the hub, um, 
all the people uh, who is around you helping you from the hub. Uh, this was our experience. Uh, we, we met them, we tried to communicate um, constantly because they are going to be, uh, this is going to be your first network on a foreign country. So it's important. They're, they're the ones who are going to talk about your business and about your product there in, in this new country. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Let me let me try, Fernanda, if Alfonso and the team in, in China can uh, can hear us and can talk. Uh, yes. Alfonso, could you make a try with the with the micro? We didn't hear you yet and we didn't see your, your camera. No, um, we are going to wait them. So uh, Fernanda, uh, you are talking uh, us concerning your relationship with Innovation Hub China. So please continue. Yes. Um, well, the first network uh, networking we had, networking experience in China was through the hub with the people they they know and they they contact contact us with each other. They help us get in meetings to present uh, our products. Uh, so yes, yeah, the first thing is uh, networking. The second point or topic, second and third, is about the product or your technology. And I, I talked about this, about this before, about the readiness of the product. They are interested in technology and products which are almost ready to be sell. So uh, work on getting your product ready. And uh, one, one topic, which is, uh, we talk about make your product better, not cheaper, because uh, it's not for every product and not for every technology, but in our special uh, case, we have uh, an exoskeleton called Alice, which is a low cost, um, low cost exoskeleton. Uh, the, we pitched this idea uh, for Chinese business people. And the, one of the questions they had uh, was, why would I invest in your robot if there are better robots here? So we came from Mexico and from America and from the idea where if your product is cheap, it's, it's an attribute. So we came with the idea that this was the best attribute from our technology. Uh, you want to, Alfonso, I don't know if, if you uh, can Let hear. me just try if we can hear you. Alfonso, <laughs> we saw you. Hola, hola. Hola, yes, perfect. You are oh, yeah. again with us. <laughs> Yes, we can hear you. And Fernanda was explaining us, Alfonso, uh, what uh, their company is doing actually in China and how is the relationship with uh, with Innovation Hub China. Sí. Eso es un eso es un caso. Uh, so, sorry. Yes. Um, look, uh, one of the questions that uh, we had before regarding the, the, the Mexico just, uh, people coming from out of, outside of China. I think uh, Ms. Ms. Doris wants to chime in on the topic. I have no idea, sorry, I have no idea the technology is fast now. But in China, I do the medical AI uh, uh, here. Um, we have a problem. Actually, we want to uh, uh, our medical AI to create some kind of job or the doctors that uh, in fact so we cannot do, especially for the imaging AI uh, history. And uh, um, we prefer the technology like uh, we can cut some kind of uh, job from the doctor, or you can support the person, the normal people, they can do it. Uh, here by themselves. So we have a uh, popular um, application here, um, like kids, they can help the uh, people to uh, um, uh, do the exercise or something like this. But for 
for the medical, uh, you need to uh, um, uh, you need to rely on the uh, the um, rely on the doctors, but actually uh, we cannot uh, solve the problem. Uh, so uh, uh, next uh, next time for the investor uh, market, they mainly focus on um, the software solution or some kind of uh, hardware service. Uh, they need to do the real uh, solution for the doctor or for the patients. Uh, for me, I uh, change the imaging AI from uh, AI software to solve the problem of the, the patients to uh, do some kind of a solution for the clinical trial, especially for the oncology. Uh, medicine uh, now because in China uh, the government uh, just uh, pronounced some kind of uh, industry guideline uh, for the own core medicine uh, to support uh, the medicine uh, company to do the clinical uh, trial in China using the uh, imaging and points. Uh, this is especially uh, good. Uh, uh, information for the imaging AI company in China right now. Um, uh, other kind of industry we really focus on uh, robots uh, to do the surgery or something like this. Uh, but uh, we uh, have a lot of solutions because I uh, just uh, work in Zhejiang University. We have a lot of great partners. They do uh, uh, technology like a lot of with AI, something like this. Uh, but we cannot just uh, replace the doctor. We can just uh, uh, support or assist some kind of work of the doctor. So it's not kind of poor solution for this market. So uh, we are preferred uh, the solution. You can do a detailed solution, or you can do a totally, um, a totally uh, uh, solution for the doctor or uh, for the patient. That's that's my uh, point. Help me a little bit earlier. I just echo one thing Doris Doris just said that uh, in China there's lots lots of progress from the government to give you money. So this is one thing yeah, that I've also uh, thought of that help or recovery thing. When you come to China, one thing is their source of money, many sources, <laughs> many levels of governments, they give money to uh, new companies. Sometimes because the project is good, sometimes because the person is good. So both are happening, and I've also actually most this program a lot. So that's a very important point. It's very different from other countries. So here's two points, very important. What Ms. Doris just said is for those people who are developing software or AI solutions, China has a very big problem of this kind of solution. They, they're hungry for this kind of solution that can streamline processes or that can take some of the burden of doctors, right? Because there's a, a very big amount of people here. So any any development that implies uh, software uh, or AI solutions is welcome. For example, monitoring patients, uh, streamlining processes, repetitive processes, all these kind of technologies are very interesting. Now, the second point is what kind of help or what kind of support you want from China? So there's many kinds. As uh, Fernanda was just saying, uh, she and uh, her company uh, have, have, um, have tapped into two of these kinds. Basically, we have government support, government grants. Number two is uh, actually a company that is related to your project. And number three is uh, an investment company, VC, which ideally is also specialized on your topic. You don't, you don't want a general VC like a very big pension funds or whatever. 
you want PCs who are specialized on, on medicine or pharma or the kind of thing you do. Sometimes you mix them. For example, um, Fernanda, her project, we, we first approached uh, the government here and they liked it. So they, they gave a, a, a green light. What, what, you, what you do is uh, sometimes you get uh, a grant, which is like a fondo perdido, no creo cómo se dice en inglés, pero subsidy. It's like a subsidy. Yeah. The government has a, a low interest loan. It's, but it's, it's not a loan. Just the government will just give you the money. Yeah. And there are several of these kinds of grants. Sometimes it's free. Sometimes they ask you uh, for every dollar that they give you, you have to put another dollar. So it's a, it's a joint. Yeah. And um, once uh, these grants are not very big, sometimes they're from $15,000 to maybe $200,000, but they are very important in the sense that it, you get uh, government support. So once you get approved with this kind of grant, you can go to a, either a company or a VC, and these, these uh, entities will be interested because you already have this support. So, so that's, uh, that's a very big leg up that you get. Sometimes your, your project is um, mature enough that you don't need a government grant. So you go directly to um, a company to show, you, to show your mature project, either a company or a VC. Those are private funds. Or you can go to both. But uh, what, it, what I want to say is that it really depends on uh, how advanced is your project? If your project is a little bit uh, behind, so you go to ask for government grants and you can uh, finish some licenses or some tests or some trials that you need to do. But if your project is already pre-commercial or commercial, even if it's very small scale, then you go directly to the, to the private entities. So that's basically the three options that we we do here. So here in the IPOP, um, you can contact us and we will help you uh, get the, the, uh, the appropriate strategy for your project, whether you need to go to the government or to a company or to both, go directly to a VC. That's, that's uh, the kind of uh, orientation that we do. First, we do that in Mexico. Uh, there, we, we just first analyze the, the technical part of your project and how good is it financially, your projections and stuff. And once you come to China, we will tell you what is the, what is the correct door to which you have to go. Perfect. Thank you, Alfonso. We don't have uh, at this moment additional questions. Um, yes. So, uh, to, to our guests and attendees, if you have a, a, a final question concerning uh, the relationship with, between uh, LATAM and China markets or also the uh, specific activities or, or how we can contact um, Innovation Hub China to, to, to understand uh, the, the needs of, of China market, please, uh, you can address uh, here. Uh, the questions in chat or in Q and A section. Also, we are going to share. We we was uh, sharing the um, uh, email and uh, the, the the data, the information of contact of the different uh, participants in our session. So um, you can contact them uh, directly. Also, uh, in order to you have additional information. It was a very interesting. Uh, session, Alfonso, and, and, and we appreciate all the, 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 the participants to, to, to be today here. Uh, LATAM has a normal potential concerning uh, technology and innovation, and, and, and the difficult part is how to get this uh, innovation and to uh, advance in, in, uh, in, in the different stages to arrive to the market. And, and we believe that this connection with uh, Market China uh, Chinese market is, is very interesting with the incubator, with the organization that you present us today. Um, Alfonso, do you have a final quest, uh, point to share with the audience? 
Uh, well, yes. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Mr. Mr. Winsal, Ms. Sun, Ms. Doris Sun, Mr. Miyang, who's still there listening to us. And uh, I'm just going to close with a little bit of Spanish. Sure, thank you. Uh, gracias a todos por su tiempo. Yo sé que este es, es un tema bastante complejo, muy amplio. Aquí vimos pues tres, tres partes así de, de forma, digamos, superficial. Pero eh, los, para la gente que está interesada en el mercado chino de medicina, de cómo cooperar para, para desarrollar sus proyectos de tecnología y de ciencia, eh, pues como ya dijeron, ahí, ahí tenemos este, un montón de de contactos en donde los podemos estar apoyando. Eh, queríamos darles algún ejemplo, algunos ejemplos básicos de, de las cosas que se hacen aquí en China. Hay mucho que discutir acerca de regulaciones, acerca de clasificaciones, acerca de cómo eh, preparar los proyectos para que realmente sean atractivos ante un inversionista. Sí, hay, hay mucho trabajo que hacer primero en el país de origen, pero... Eh, pues para eso estamos aquí, estamos cumpliendo, de hecho estamos cumpliendo a cabo de dos años de haber abierto aquí nuestras puertas en China y pues hemos tenido algunos casos de éxito muy interesantes. Tenemos cada vez más, más un portafolio de, de, de proyectos de Latinoamérica más interesante y, y lo que es importante es que China tiene mucha, mucho interés en cooperar con, con nosotros. O sea, no se habían dado cuenta de que hay, tanta, hay tanto desarrollo tecnológico en México y en Latinoamérica. Ahorita se están dando cuenta y hay mucho, mucho interés. Gracias. Fernanda, igual nos gustaría si en español puedes compartir algunas ideas finales para los emprendedores que quieren ir a China. Que, ¿Cuál sería tu, tu recomendación final? Eh, mi recomendación final es que eh, aprovechen la ayuda que se les está dando si son parte de, del hub de verdad aprovechen que es una súper ayuda, son las primeras personas, es el puente que los va a llevar a que lleguen allá, eh, de verdad es que es mucha ayuda, también tienen que trabajar ustedes eh, muy fuerte para poder lograrlo, es difícil, no imposible, pero normalmente esas son la, las cosas difíciles, son las que valen la pena, entonces ojalá, espero que se animen a contactar a, a todos los del Hop. Muchas gracias. Nos quedan unos cinco minutos para, para poder cerrar la sesión y, y quisiera pedirle a Graciela García que justamente nos, nos pueda compartir, si puedes abrir tu cámara, Graciela, y compartirnos sobre el Innovation Hub China, cómo pueden en México acercarse. Hemos compartido por aquí uh, datos, pero ¿qué podrías decirnos con respecto a los apoyos que justamente pueden recibir desde diferentes campus eh, en México? Y no solamente para eh, organizaciones, estudiantes del de TEC de Monterrey, que es también muy importante comentarlo, sino para eh, investigadores emprendedores de México y otros países que quieran acercarse a China. Sí, muchas gracias por el espacio, Víctor. Gracias, Fernanda. Thanks to all of you guys in China. Eh, sí, efectivamente, el Hub da servicio no solamente a la comunidad del TEC, eh, da eh, servicio también a la comunidad externa. De hecho, estamos en búsqueda de, de startups, proyectos, tecnologías, investigadores, eh, que más que se quieran ir a China y se quieran vincular con el ecosistema en China, eh, específicamente es en, la, en las industrias de biotecnología, dispositivos médicos, inteligencia artificial y, e innovación en la educación. Entonces, por ahí, si alguien trae algún proyecto y quiere eh, más información de cómo, puede, cómo podemos vincularlos con estos ecosistemas, eh, por favor acérquense, eh, sigan en nuestras redes sociales. Vamos a traer diferentes eventos y diferentes iniciativas para que pues para que se unan, eh, nos sigamos informando, sigamos colaborando y, y que podamos exportar mucho más talento latinoamericano a, a China. Y como bien lo dijo Fernanda, gran parte de la estrategia es más apostarle justamente a la innovación, no, no tanto a quizás a, a ver cuestiones quizás de precios, sino a, a apostarle. Eh, el talento hay, ¿no? eh, ahora sí que falta apoyarlo, ¿no? pero... Pero la verdad es que sí, los invitamos a que nos sigan en redes sociales y que si tienen alguna duda, nos contacten eh, vía correo. Por ahí ya también dejamos nuestros correos y las ligas del juego. Sí, de hecho hay una pregunta para ustedes, Graciela, directamente en Q&A de Claudia Beatriz Hernández, por si por favor nos ayudas ahí sobre una sí. específica en una tecnología. Uh, yo nada más comparto nuestros mensajes eh, finales. Eh, primero, invitarlos próximo mes a nuestro Mid and Grid de agosto 
les vamos a compartir la liga, pueden empezar a registrarse desde este momento. Eh, es una segunda parte sobre los aliados estratégicos en la fabricación de dispositivos médicos eh, que vamos a ver en esta sesión. Vamos a ver organizaciones con capacidades mucho más eh, maduras para lotes más amplios que los que vimos en el mes pasado, con la posibilidad de que puedan platicar con ellos, eh, eh, a evaluar temáticas muy específicas que les estaremos compartiendo en las semanas que vienen. Los invitamos, el evento es gratuito, en línea, eh, en Zoom y en Facebook Live, eh, por aquí le, en el chat podrán darle clic y registrarse desde el día de hoy para agendarla eh, y apartar sus agendas. Um, recordarles de TechMatch. TechMatch es una plataforma que hemos creado en Pragmatech para eh, apoyar proyectos de dispositivos médicos que están en etapas tempranas en desarrollo para acercarlos con proveedores especializados para que identifiquen organizaciones que les ayuden en temas regulatorios, propiedad intelectual, escalamiento, fondos de inversión en México. Hemos abierto ya eh, la mesa de inversiones, eh, así que si gustan contactarnos, eh, en el sitio web o, o en el correo que les vamos a pasar igual aquí por el chat para que puedan eh, acceder. Es una plataforma sin costo que vincula, tiene un, un rol de articulación y de poder conectar para avanzar en sus proyectos tecnológicos. Ah, y dos eh, informaciones finales eh, de Hacking Health. Eh, uno, este eh, curso sobre bases legales para emprendedores en el sector salud en donde podrán justamente atender diversos temas sobre la constitución de la empresa, las relaciones laborales, los contratos, marcas, etcétera, aspectos que son periféricos, pero también muy importantes para ir considerándolos en, eh, en, en su desarrollo. Eh, vamos a, a, a estar las ligas de contacto que pueden ver justamente en el chat. Nos preguntan cómo pueden ver las presentaciones de estos webinars. Eh, el día de mañana les vamos a hacer llegar la información de esta sesión y van a poder también acceder a, al canal de YouTube de Pragmatech donde están todos los meet and greet de este año que hemos realizado con nuestros diversos aliados pueden, si, si se lo perdieron si no estuvieron, pueden volver a verlos compartirlos igual y último mensaje, igual eh, este evento de Medical Expo Startups eh, 2021 organizado por Hacking Health y Health IDS eh, si son startups que están buscando eh, avanzar eh, en su desarrollo tecnológico, pueden registrarse en esta plataforma del 28 de junio al 8 de agosto para participar y, eh, y bueno, encontrar aliados estratégicos que puedan ayudarlos eh, a avanzar. Muchas gracias a todos ustedes. Sé que fue una sesión eh, un poquito noche, pero la diferencia de horario eh, es, es este, relevante e importante comentarlo. Allá son ahorita las uh, 10 de la mañana, si mal no no recuerdo, pero realmente es una sesión que empezó a las 8 de la mañana y que llevó a nuestros invitados a estar desde tiempo antes. Gracias, Alfonso. Uh, thank you, Alfonso. Thank you, uh, our guests in China, to being here and connected with Mexico. We appreciate this possibility to talk with you and to, uh, uh, to share the information with you. Um, see you soon. Welcome to Mexico when you want. Um, gracias a todos. Muy buenas noches. Welcome to China. Thank you. Gracias.